Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match between Chitin and Cron Aberrant on Rooftop Showdown. I'm Shadow Three Three Three, your host, and this is going to be an interesting game. Both Chitin and Cron Aberrant are experienced players; they know what they're doing. Chitin very quickly going for Grekum, and I think Cron Aberrant will also go for Grekum. He usually does. So it'll be a Grekum mirror, which are often very intense matches, given that both players, once, especially once they get Chronoport, can just Chronoport anywhere across the map. But even before then, just because Grekum is so dependent on units, you can often see. Grekum just Grekum players just going back and forth, going everywhere across the map is very, very interesting to try to track it all because of course there's just so much to keep track of. And oh, apparently Cron Aberrant had some lag issues early on, which is unfortunate. But he is in, and he will be able to go back and fix up his race. So he, that's why he hasn't chosen this race so far. This is a replay, by the way, so we're just seeing what happened ultimately. And the yes, Cron Aberrant is going for Grekum as I expected. So Kitan. Building up pretty early economy, getting, oh, actually one QP and four LC, so he's probably going for an Octopod attack like he often does. While Cron Aberrant is paused, he's currently setting up his economy, one LC and one QP apparently in the future. He has not actually set that up yet. No, never mind, two on LC and he will be building the Octos for this in about nine seconds or so. Well, nine in-game seconds, he's fast-forwarding, so right now. He's pausing to set up his Octos, get that economy part set up. So both players going for rather... Okay, Chitin is going for an Octopod, so he's not going for Economy. He is going for enough Economy to support the Octopod, while Cron Aberrant is going for... You know, it's hard to tell. He hasn't unpaused yet to fill everything up. He is actually going for very, very, very fast LC. He converted his QP into LC and going for 5 RPs early on. So Cron Aberrant focusing heavily on Economy early on, rather than focusing at all on tech or on units. No, there we go. Got that Octo set up. And Chitin is... Chitin himself is building another couple LCRPs while his Octopod halfway across the map is... on on course to get Cron Aberrant's base, though. will be hitting at about the 3 minute mark. It's the 2 minute mark right now. So Cron Aberrant has another 2 minutes from his point of view, being at the 109 mark to actually attack. And it looks like Cron Aberrant has actually decided not to go quite so heavily for Economy, or not, at least not quite so heavily for RPs. He is getting the Octos that he had set up. And he has one Octo over here that he decided not to turn into an RP. And there's another RP up, Octo up here that was turned into an RP that's not been built. So I'm not sure exactly what he's changed around there. But anyway, Chitin at the three minute mark has arrived. Is attacking Cryamarin's Arcticus, which obviously is pretending to be the Triad. So Chitin has not actually gone forward and passed the Arcticus. Now he is doing exactly that, moving his Octopod forward to attack the Triad directly while Cryamarin sees what's going on. And does not have any response yet, but he is jumping back about a minute to prepare his response. The best response, honestly, would be just getting like, two or three Octos. I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, that's the best response. I haven't actually really had a chance to try it myself, being that I play Vector most of the time. And Chronomart, actually interesting, is going for an Octo Harassment, going down th through the south base, up and around the south side of Chitin's main, to harass Chitin, especially in the QPRPs, while Chitin... His Octopod at the 3 minute mark is attacking the Triad, so Cron Aberrant does not have long before that Triad becomes an issue. But Chitin... Chitin has not checked this yet. There is damage being set up in the... Well, the relative future. It's actually the near past. Just about to hit the present, too. And it looks like Chitin has not checked this out. Actually, Chitin is going to check this out immediately. And he sees that the Octo is coming in. will be... A will be attacking that reef. Well, that Seppi, though, is going to become a reef. So, Chitin's tech has been delayed slightly, though Chitin is jumping back right to the beginning of the attack to try to deal with it. Actually, before the beginning of the attack, he has not built any more units to deal with it. He has very little LC, so it's going to be hard for him to build any units to actually deal with this. And his Octopod has apparently been cancelled entirely, actually. Yeah, his Octopod attack has... Well, Crown Aberrant is delaying the Octo attack. The Octopod attack... No, it's still going on. Ah, here we are. The Octos are destroying the Octopod, like I mentioned before, so 3 Octos is the best solution. Good to know, I was correct on that one. Makes me feel a little bit happy inside. So, yes, Octos, great counter to Octopods. Not at all surprising. The only thing is that Octopods, if they can destroy the Octos, but if the Octos get close, then the Octos are done. But if the Octos get close, the Octopod has a hard time, because it can't... Well, it doesn't deal splash damage, so it can't damage the group of Octos. And it also, in this case, the Octopod is just moving in as well. It's not actually even attacking, so the Octos get a lot of free hits. But even without that, a Reef has also been set up for Cron Aberrant, so he's going to be able to repair. And that battle, as we see, goes very well for him. While Chitin now has to deal with the Octo in his main base. 
and an octopod, the octopod attack, like I said, nothing's really changed there, but the octo attack in the main base has to be dealt with, and it's dealing with damage it can. Damaging the octo that's being built to turn into an RP, probably not the best idea. This epi really is the best idea. If it gets to build that reef, it's going to be very problematic for Crown Amaranth to get through the base, because griefs, of course, heal and produce tech, and it looks like Crown Amaranth has lost his octo before he's managed to destroy the tech. That's the octopod attack we saw before. Crown Amaranth is in the main base. He is not affecting this attack. He is not attacking this epi. He is going straight for the octo, and the octos have started to attack against the assaulting octo. Crown Amaranth has not changed around his tactic at all. But Kitan has changed around a bit. He is putting up an Octo for... Or, sorry, that Octo actually wasn't there. But Kitan will have an Octo for Defense in the future. Sorry, I shouldn't say in the future. He, this Octo was the one that we saw in the future as he was jumping around. So Kitan has managed to defend against... That's the important part. Kitan has managed to defend against the Octo that came in from Crown Aberrant. Crown Aberrant did not harass the Sephi, which would have been the best option. Which is rather unfortunate, but Crown Aberrant does have a Reef earlier on. He does have the ability to make tech. He does have... Actually, he's bubble wrapping completely, so Crown Amaranth has at least managed to push off Kitan's attack. He hasn't managed to get a huge attack in himself, but still, getting his economy set up, and economy ahead of Kitan, it's actually, well, even with Kitan at this point. Kitan did manage to build quite a bit of economy during that attack, which is not a bad thing. Very good thing, actually. Kitan pushing for his economy, he is, his tech is a bit behind, though, that's where Crown Amaranth could have an advantage, though Crown Amaranth does not have much QP. Having converted the QP early on, he doesn't have the ability to make his tech as early as he might otherwise like to. Especially since he did not get any QP RPs, while Kitan has been investing in QP RPs a little bit throughout that entire attack. So Crown Aberrant does have a bubble wrap up, does have his reef set up that he would like, but he doesn't have any tech being built yet, so Kitan will have a technology advantage and a slight economy advantage, at least in Q Plasma. And Liquid Crystal, it's about even, it looks like, yes, it's 8. Sorry, he has... Crown Iron has 9, and Chitin has 8 RPs on Liquid Crystal. While in Q Plasma, Chitin has 9 to Crown Aberrant's 4. So, there's no competition. Crown Aberrant is getting a bit behind in economy, which is kind of ironic, given his early start with QP conversion. I guess he didn't really go... F he really didn't build enough QP to make up for that, and the Octos were useful, but I'm not sure if it was worth it to convert. Anyway, Crown Aberrant is... Attacking very heavily against Kitan, he will be able to destroy Kitan's base by the future. You see, in the future, Kitan has lost the entire triad, but I'm sure Kitan will be dealing with that. He is about three minutes, or two and a half minutes down from the present. Getting his legal class up as well, he's getting a Faropod, and that will be able to take care of the Octos, no problem. Faropod about halfway done, about three quarters of the way done, it will be almost done, but the Octos are trying to deal with damage they can to it. Two of the Octos are going to be able no, the Octo has, the Faropod has gotten up just about one second before it would have died, and the Faropod will be able to send will be able to push off the octos but the octos will be able to deal with what damage they can in the meantime one of the octos damaging the sepi that's progenerating won't be able to kill it in time the faropod not dying very quickly either an octopod being built as well to help defend the octopod is getting directly attacked though and it should be killed before it goes up and yes halfway done the octopod dies zeppi taking quite a bit of damage as well the progenerating sepi will not die before this octo does some looks no it will actually just barely die right as the octo dies the progenerating sepi dies not a good situation to be in. That means that only Sepi pods can be built from this duo right now. So, and this is right next to the playable pass, by the way. So, Kitan will have to rebuild that Sepi. He can't just fix up the attack. That is the final state of the attack, barring Chrono porting, which is not being researched by either player at this point. And I should point out, Chrono Amber did get advanced structures in the meantime, has gotten a spire, and is building a fire pod of his own. So, interestingly, no Sepi pod. Not by coming in from the south for Kitan. Kitan has actually sent this down. I I missed that. This is something that, that happened when I was playing as Kitan as well, that sending his Octopod down and using that to harass. This, however, has been spotted by Crown Amber. He was definitely expecting this, and he will be able to stop this before it deals any significant damage. So, Crown Amber has managed to defend against this, has about half a dozen Faros and a Faropod now. Very nice army, though. He does not have any detect. Well, he has Faros for detection, but he doesn't have any dedicated anti air. That is the one thing he lacks right now. Given that a Faropod is the only thing in play for Kitan at this point, it's not a big deal, but Kitan is about a minute down from there. No, he's jumped up about 10 seconds. Sepi Legos could be a reality, though. He could turn this Faropod into a Progenerator and start making Sepi Legos. And he is doing exactly that, sending the Faropod in Progen mode. Sepi Legos are imminent. While Faropod coming in from Crown Amaranth down towards the south side of the map, 
That will be able to harass even further. Harassing the south expansion. Chitin has the only expansion in the game. Colonel Diamond has not actually decided to get any expansions yet. Fully sat or almost fully saturating his main base, except for the Q-Plasma. He still hasn't invested much in that. Mostly investing in his army. Getting a Seppi Pot and another... So this isn't another half dozen far Faros, is it? It is not. No, this is the same half dozen Faros we saw before, along with more Octus being sent to the south base. So Crown Emerald is at the 817 market, investing in a south base. Still focusing very heavily on economy. Getting rid of this Octopod that Chitin is using to defend the south base, but Chitin, back when he is... Has not has Seppi Ligo setting up, has Seppi Pod setting up. Seppi Pod and Seppi Ligo will be able to take care of the Fire Pod, so what we just saw with the Fire Pod defeating the Octopod is of little consequence. The Octopod is, however, being returned to that base from attacking the south base that Kron Amarin is taking now. Kitan will, of course, lose that Octopod, or may lose the Octopod, but the Fire Pod is. No, the Fire Pod is coming around. It will be attacking the Octopod, and the Seppi Ligo and Seppi Pod should be able to get rid of it. Kitan has not moved in to attack yet. He is. The one we're focusing on right now. He has not, however, changed his tactics to focus on destroying this far pod. And he has lost one of the RPs as well. Not a huge amount. Well, it's a decent loss, but he's still ahead in economy. Crown Emerald hasn't yet got himself back in the game for economy, though he does have good anti-air, good units. He has a great army. Right now, he could actually attack and get away with it. To be perfectly honest, the units that... Yeah, this is all that Chitin has. Those three units are all that Chitin has. Another Sebi Ligo is being built, however, but at this point... Crown Aberrant could go for an attack and be successful. His main base has also been almost dried up. One of the LC crates has been dried up. The other LC crates are close, except for this one over here in the center. It's... well, okay, it's... it is halfway done. The rest of them... I'm sorry, this one back here has hardly been harvested. And of course the ones in the south base are starting to be harvested, but not too much. A dome is built in the south base, so Crown Aberrant will be able to defend it, while Crown Aberrant does have his Pharopod coming up into Chitin's base, but that's just an artifact of time we've not arriving yet. But now the Seppi League coming in, destroying the Seppi Pods. Two of the Seppi Pods are left. One of the Seppi Pods is left against the Seppi League, but the Seppi League will be destroyed quite handily, and it looks like Crimer is pausing. Probably, we can... Well, see, so he's probably figuring out how to get... There's order set up or economy set up, because he does not have Chrono Porting yet, so he's not pausing to do a Chrono Port attack. And now the Seppi, Seppi League has... Well, one Seppi League has gone down, the other Seppi League is still up. An Octopod coming in to try to destroy... What's left of Kronheimer's army, so I guess I was wrong. Kronheimer couldn't have actually attacked at that point. He would have still needed a few more forces. Which, I suppose, is not entirely surprising. Seppi Ligos are air superiority fighters, but... I was bit, I'm a bit surprised that... The Seppi Paws did not do that great of a job at dealing with the attack. So it looks like Kitan is retreating. He's only using that as an exploratory attack. He's not actually committing to it. Building more Seppi Ligos. Has four Seppi Ligos already, which is quite impressive. Well, for the version 1.2 economy, it's quite impressive. For version 1.1.1.0 economy, that's a small start. Which is a nice change, I must say. I'm really quick glad that was changed. Seppi Ligos are scouting towards the northwest expansion. They will find nothing, though they may find the RPs coming in right as they come in. Chitin has not stayed around to check that out. He probably will see it, though. This damage right here is likely to be what that is. And Crown Emerald still thinks that this is a, there's an attack coming in from the south from Nocturne. It looks like that attack actually is coming in. Chitin has not changed anything with that so far. But Chitin has changed around the Seppi Ligo attack. Yeah, Seppi Ligo attack. Coming in, attacking one of the reefs. And the Arcticus. Not dealing any significant damage. The, that reef is still useful for healing, but... it's This attack is giving Crown Emerald a lot of time. Crown Emerald could easily go back and start... Well, actually, couldn't easily go back and start dealing with it. He is getting Crown Reporting, though. And Crown Reporting is being researched by... Oh, wait, he's not at that point in time. He has research Chrono Porting, though. Chitin may not... No, wait, Chitin has stopped the research of Chrono Porting. It looks like this reef was the one that was researching Chrono Porting, which is a bit of a shame. I'm surprised he set the forward reef, the one that's most vulnerable to research Chrono Porting. Generally, a bad idea to do, have multiple reefs. Set the one that's most defensible to research. Admittedly, in this case, it's kind of hard to tell, but this one probably would have been the most defensible one, given the position of the Arcticus. Anyway, Chitin coming in very strong with a large force, about half of them knocked those about... Well, let's see, two Faros, four Seppi Ligos, Seppi Pod coming in, destroying everything, and progenerating Octopod as well, which could be quite handy if he decides to set down the Seppi Liga, or sorry, Seppi Pod, and start using it to destroy what's left, and it looks like Crown Emerald has lost this game, he did not manage to pull away an economy, although admittedly, Titan didn't really pull away an economy, he just managed to get the right unit set, Crown Emerald did not have enough, and his current reporting did not quite stay alive. If Chrono Porting had managed to stay alive, he probably would have been able to deal quite a bit of damage. But unfortunately for him, he was not 
the reef that was researching Corona Porting got killed. So it's always a good idea to have the reef you're using, or reef or annex or armory that's researching your tech, be the one that's hardest to kill so that your opponent can't easily harass out your tech. Because Corona Amrit did lose the gate tech. We see it right now in the present just because that reef, while destroyed, was not apparently there yet. But yeah, Corona Amrit did not manage to successfully, or if he did successfully get it, he didn't manage to successfully get it in time. He didn't get the one he wanted. So nicely done by Kaiden. Very clutch game. Nice, nice amount of harassment. Very enjoyable to watch. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So have a good night, everyone.